Today I'm going to show you how to produce in the style of everybody's favorite pop metal band, Bring Me The Horizon. And when I say Bring Me The Horizon, I mean kind of one sound of Bring Me The Horizon. It seems like they're at a point in their career where they're literally changing their sound every album, but it kind of makes it hard to do a video like this. So this is just kind of one sound of Bring Me The Horizon. But before we jump into the track, let me introduce myself. Hi, my name is Seth. I do one of these videos every Thursday to show people how to produce their own music. I'm a remote pop completion producer, which means I specialize in taking an artist's song idea on their phone and turning it into a finished release ready for Spotify. Songs I've produced and written have been on these playlists and I've written and produced an entire record that went out through Warner Music. So if you have a pop vision in your head that you'd like to get started on, click the top link in the description. All right, now let's get to the track. So I will start out by just playing the track in its entirety. So yeah, let's just start with the elements one by one. So yeah, we'll just start with the elements going down them one by one. First thing we have here is our rhythm electric guitars. So for this track, I'm using JST Tone Forge, Jason Richardson on the rhythm preset. These are the settings that I'm using. None of the effects really. We're doing a bit of a dip at 500 and 8K and 100. And then I don't think we're doing a ton of processing on the last part. After that, we're using an EQ to cut out a lot of the excess low end and the high end. Looks like we're going for about 123 on the high pass and about 10K on the low pass. And then one of my favorite ways to sort of clean up heavy metal guitars is to add a little bit of OTT just to balance them out a little bit. And it's at a super low depth, like 8%, but it just spices it up a little bit without, with. It just brings it out a little bit. And like normal, we are double tracking these, panning them left and right just to give them a little bit of width. After that, we have these lead guitars, which are also using Tone Forge Jason Richardson, but we're on the lead setting with the edge all the way up. And I think all the other settings are the same. Again, EQ and OTT. And then on the bus here, I think we high passed it a little bit more just because we didn't need as much low end as the rhythms. You can just hear a little bit of that low end just go away. We then have all of those guitars going into a bus with some soothe on the default preset just to clean up some of that annoying pick attack without. With. This default preset is honestly my favorite go-to because it has a really large peak here around like the six or 4K. This default preset on Soothe is actually probably the most useful for this style just because it has this really large divot in the 5K range. But yeah, after that, we move on to the bass. If you saw my MGK video last week, which I'll link to here, you'll already be familiar with this setup. We have a live bass being played through a super distorted amp and it's being blended with this synthesizer that's playing the same thing, but it's really far down and really compressed and blended in just enough to give it a little bit of low end. For this top live bass, we're using Parallax, which is my favorite distorted bass amp setting ever. After that, we're going into CLA bass just to sort of tighten some things up, doing the tiniest little bit of L1 to limit it, some max bass and R bass to sort of shape the low end the way that I wanted it, and then this auto filter, which I just used instead of an EQ, since all I wanted to do was sort of high pass it with all of it turned off. All of it turned on. The next thing we have is this Anna 2 preset called Essential. Sounds like this. I then filtered the high end out so it was just that subby low end. A little bit of a high pass filter just so it wasn't going down too far. And then a couple of Ableton glue compressors and L1 to just make the level consistent. And those two together sound like this.
Now let's look at the drums. For the main kit, I'm using the GGD One Kit Wonder Modern Fusion Kit. And then like normal, I have a couple of sample layers that I'm layering underneath it just to oomph up some of those kick and snare hits. All together, they sound like this. Lately with all my drums, I've been throwing them into this FET76 compressor from Arturia and then a little bit of this drum sizzle preset on MoTT at a really low amount just to sort of blend everything together. Without those two, with. Just makes everything a little bit more pissed off. And this utility plug in here is just to automate the volume up for this one snare hit at the very beginning. Honestly, if you're in Ableton, this is how I recommend doing volume automations. Just throw a utility plugin on and then automate the gain knob. Because now if I wanted to adjust my drum volume as a whole, I could do that here without worrying about it messing up my mix. Next thing we have up are synthesizers. So we have two main parts. The first one is this guy. It's this super saw dance groove preset, which I think I messed with the ARP settings. I honestly don't remember. But yeah, with a little bit of OTT just to bring out some presence with some ROM reverb on this send. And then we have these two other ARPs that I'll solo. And they're actually playing the same riff that the guitars and the bass are playing. So they just sort of beef up everything. Two layers, one playing an octave up and then one playing an octave down. And you can see here, I actually added an EQ3 and cut down a lot of the lows because I wasn't actually trying to get like a beefier low end. I was just trying to add this sort of layering effect to the sound that I already had and make that sound stand out more. So just because you're making a sound lower doesn't mean you need to keep the low end. And then the last thing we have are these special effects, which I feel like Bring Me the Horizon are really good at. There's always some unique layers that make the song really interesting. So the first thing we have here is this arcade loop. This is from the In The World line, the Stud Dirt preset, and it just adds a little bit of this weird ambience around the beginning of the track. We also have this other arcade loop, it looks like from the same preset, which is just a bit of a snare hit, but it's really wonky. Doesn't look like there's a lot of processing on those two. This is probably the one that's the craziest. So if I just play it for you right here, it's this percussion loop. Let me show you what it's like unedited. So I'll turn off the effects and then it looks like it was transposed. It's me beatboxing. And I just stretched it out, transposed it up, added a little bit of a transient envelope. So it's cutting off the tails a bit, quantized it. And then I threw it into a guitar amplifier. Added a gate after that to sort of chop it off again. EQ'd it. Added some of this Juno chorus. And then some auto pan. It sounds super disgusting, but when you add it on top of everything else, it just fits. And then we have clap impact because of course we do. And then I'll go through my mastering chain again. If you saw my Florida Georgia line video, you've probably already seen this, but I'm just doing a little bit of soothe. We're just using a little bit of soothe on this mastering chain at the beginning to get rid of some of those annoying frequencies, some infinite EQ, doing some subtractive EQ with a high pass filter, and then doing some cuts specifically on the sides, doing some parallel filtered compression with this bus force processor, some waves MV2, using some upward compression to bring stuff up without necessarily squashing the peaks, waves max bass to just extend that low end a little bit. Slate's fresh air plugin to give it a little bit of high end excitement. Then Ozone 9 Exciter for a little bit of saturation. And now some additive side EQ just to make the stereo image a little bit wider. So here I'll leave the limiters on and just show you what those are doing. Off. Off. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe. You can also check out the video I did last week where I showed you how to produce in the style of MGK. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Peace out.